How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to review this thing, the Khan 39 Marshall. I finally got around to it because uh, yeah, it's been doing pretty well on that battle on the ice. I believe there is better times to be had but it's definitely became a little bit more relevant so uh, I'll have a look into it. The uh, engines, there's six of them basically and the first three seem to be like truck engines and your power to weight's like pretty near the top. These last three, as you can see, like a massive drop in power to weight so I've never even tried them, if I'm honest, as far as I remember. Uh, the gearbox, I've been using the freeway one, but I did use the SnowRunner one a bit, and there is, basically, this thing's a bit erratic at high speed, so it might be worth using the uh, off-road. There is no suspension, so but it's pretty like tall anyway, considering it's got some pretty big tyres for what it is. As for the tyres, there's basically these two main tread patterns, and I kind of feel like the other ones are look a bit more grippy like they're digging to I don't know like maybe dig into mud a bit better but these like more seem like they spread your weight they seem pretty decent on snow like we'll get to that Um they're not bad on ice though I certainly I don't know it could be like placebo but I tried both tires on battle on the ice and I got the better time with these ones but that could just be a bit of luck as well but it's the ones I'd go for as for the spare tire goes on the back pretty massive can't really miss it that's what she said and uh, then the roof rack that's the only thing you can have in frame add-ons but it's a scout the roof rack's actually not the worst idea because again once it gets up to speed it's a bit erratic having that on with the roof rack bug can actually slow you down a bit and it's not necessarily a completely bad thing like it is with some of them uh, it's got diff locks engageable as for the snorkel as you can see it basically goes right to the top of the roof I'll show you later but it's like uh, to me it doesn't react as high like it starts moaning about the engine like a lot lower than not a lot lower but probably not even to where that cable joins the roof uh, as for miscellaneous it's just the wheel arches and the side steps so I can I took all that off when I was doing battle on the ice but I don't really know if it makes a lot of difference as for the bumpers I've just gone for that they're all about the same size the bumpers but I do like the little scaffold bits that wrap around the side as for all these three bumpers I actually think that one is the best the stock one's got like the big sort of bull bar things coming around the front. Um, the middle one I do like though with like the steel cables going up to the roof and stuff. But yeah, the top one is theoretically the best. Also, that middle, uh, yeah, the middle one has two uh, fog lights on the bumper. And then rims, there's only one, it's just called the Yar rims. I've actually, I've done most of this with a black paint job on. I, be, I must have painted it when uh, I was doing the Top Gear truck darts or something because I remember I used to have that. Uh, custom paint job on but yeah that was it black white and gray looks pretty nice they're like these are the color they're not horrible um that's quite nice that's not too bad either not really that keen on that if i'm honest that's quite nice as well so yeah not too bad like i say i would and i did put the uh custom on for a bit of it but i did most of this video uh with the other paint job on so uh, yeah we'll go out we'll have a look at it I actually do like the look of it. It reminds me a bit like the one that was on uh, Mudrunner. I can't remember off the top of my head now what it was called, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think it looks pretty cool. Kind of like a Russian Land Rover or something. <laughs> uh, inside, pretty normal as I'd expect. The mirror's a little bit low, so but I can see the garage door, so apparently I've got a bit of a decent view. Having the spare tyre on the back, I can't see out the back, but if I'm honest, I don't really use interior all that much and if I am I'm really looking where I'm going let alone behind me and um, I can see a lot of that garage or a good half of that garage door if I didn't have those side steps and stuff on I could see my tires the horns all right it's yeah not bad not bad for a scout and to be honest the rev counter is like right over on the right hand side of all those dials and I was surprised actually at how slow it revs. Then again, I sort of like, as you're going through the gears, it, in fact, they probably need to make it rev a bit faster. I believe, to a degree, they've nerfed this. One way that I know they definitely did was the fuel, that as you can see, it only holds 40 litres, which is not only shit, but it used to hold more than that, and then they, I think they halved it. I think it used to be 80 or something it owned, which I don't agree with because, especially that if, you have to pay for it on the uh, PlayStation Store if you haven't got the season pass. Like, yeah, make it as is and sell it and then leave it because 
I could see it more in like say an online game like Call of Duty where it's online and you're against other people but who cares if this thing it really isn't overpowered it's bordering on the opposite I stopped using it pretty quick on my actual playthrough because it's just a lot of the time it was more hassle than it's worth and you'd get halfway or whatever and then it'd do some violent shift to the left or right and you'd roll it and then I'd end up bringing the CK1500 anyway so I uh, yeah I soon just got used to either taking that or eventually I just started scouting with trucks um, as for trailers by the way there is no trailers you can have on it as another way that it's like I, th I believe that it was like that to begin with so I wouldn't really say it's a nerf but it was just not a bad uh, not a good start sorry to begin with and, and again I don't really agree or see why it can't have trailers especially on top of like they've now made it 40 litres of fuel it made more sense then that you could at least have a like a scout fuel trailer or something but that's another reason like you ain't going that far to do scouting anyway unless you've got a roof rack on or you're winching a second truck behind you or a second scout behind you that's different anyway and um, going through that mud and stuff it actually did pretty nicely it does all right even in auto or low range I did bring the snow runner gearbox out and if I'm honest like obviously you get the three low range options medium low is about all right in that sort of mud it's a bit too punchy for high low anyway and you can see you get a lot of rooster tailing off the tires so you bleed in a lot of that RPM to just wheel spin any anyway so I honestly like there are there's definitely times where once you're up to speed stick it in high low obviously but you get into the point where I could just stick it in auto and I know it doesn't have diff locks on in auto but it's not that bad when it doesn't have them on uh, yeah as it's a scout test I'm gonna go up this little path and yeah that's what I've been doing with the other one this to me is the sort of thing you'd want to be doing with scouts it's one of the few sort of I could still do this with a truck I believe but I suppose it makes a lot of sense to try and bring a little scout. It's that sort of little winded narrow path. And you can see, which I suppose is partly the uh, really slow reps, like when it goes into the next gear, it almost stops itself for a split second and it carries on. And maybe it's because the revs drop down to the next gear, but they haven't. They just don't instantly climb up the same way. So it's like, yeah, when you're going through the gears, it's. It's like you hitting the brakes for a split second instead of like yeah you hit the wrong pedal. I drove up that hill though, so you can hear some creaking in the background. It's obviously a tree or something, but again, <laughs> on a headset in the middle of the night when you just start hearing things over your right shoulder. It's not good. Made that corner pretty nice, I have to say I was uh pretty happy with that. However, Obviously the loaf and stuff like that managed to squeeze through it. I even believe the Hummer might have... I think it made the tree lean over, but I think it made it through without actually breaking the tree. I mean, maybe it, like there is definitely the situation where you could just run over this tree. But doing what I did there, I basically got wedged up on the sort of front of the tree. And I wasn't able to get through. So then I had to ram the tree out of the way, which I'm fine with. But just imagine if I did tip off and tip over or something like that may be a winch point that's now deleted but as for actual like climbing up here and stuff it's um yeah I can't say it was that bad but as you can see that all I did basically it was a different run like there were two bits spliced together where I just went through that first bit of mud after I left the garage and then I did this. Um, I basically drove straight from the garage to here and as you can see by the time I'm at the top I've not even got half my fuel so when I'm only on Black River and I've only gone I don't know like you should be able to see the garage to my left as and when I pan the camera around it's not that far away And yet, yeah, now I'm up here, it's like I wouldn't even be able to really drive back to the garage now. I'd probably, well, yeah, definitely, I reckon, run out of fuel. This, again, is straight from the garage. Um, this is the uh, freeway gearbox, like I said. I did try both through here. And again, as you can see, when I put it in low, 
it was about the same speed as auto and then when I came through in the SnowRunner gearbox I put it in high low and it just wheel span a bit more didn't really seem to gain anything really in the way of speed but compared to some scouts that get like really bogged up anyway you can see there though when it changes gear it just yeah like stops for a second and I don't think that particularly helps that it's possibly why this thing drives so erratic I was gonna say at high speed it's obviously more stable at low speed but it's still insanely erratic and part of it might be because when it goes up to the next gear the front and rear axles might be getting different amounts of power to each other and I don't know it's almost like sometimes you feel like the front tires are say yeah dabbing the brakes on like it might be engine braking yeah when you change gear but I think that's what's just pulling you around like left and right and all over the place like for example if you're driving this down a straight road if you take pretty much any vehicle the Dolphin the Loaf the Tatran would be a good one for it it's just if that road was straight you could point it there you could grab your coffee have a sip of coffee whatever look at your phone quickly <laughs> it's like with this look at it it's just every second like you constantly like a rally driver but you're not even rallying yet you just go in 20 mile an hour down a straight paved flat road and the things like yeah I'll just violently swerve right then left and then do some weird engine braking when you change gear like it's a shame really because I certainly, I'll say now, I don't think it's worth the three quid or whatever it is on the PlayStation Store. I wouldn't even say it was particularly worth like one pound sixty-nine or whatever the Navistar is. Again, it's like I'm not, don't take this as consumer advice, but I personally don't regret getting the Navistar at all. This I got the season pass anyway, so I got it for free, and in that sense, I think it's better. But I still think they're charging like way too much for. It should be more like a quid. And then, even then, they still shouldn't have changed the fuel on it. Because, yeah. I mean, you can see now, by the time I get over here, I'm going to have basically no fuel left. I'm in, by the way, right now, the SnowRunner gearbox. There it is. You can see it bleeding a lot of the RPMs and just rooster tailing. So, I was not really gaining a whole lot anyway. And as much as... I would possibly use the um, SnowRunner in this, but as for the review, it's like I kind of want to make it go its max speed and act like a fucking idiot if it wants to, because that's part of the review. Like, I don't really want to suppress the speed and then suppress one of its biggest problems, really. And like, yeah. As for getting over here, the front's got over just fine, but trying to get, see, once I'm like the front's on the road anything except change really, just have no grip on the road it starts to struggle there but then obviously the f I believe the back is a lot heavier than the front on it, maybe not a lot but there's definitely it does feel like there's more weight on the back yeah once I actually got the front wheels over that um, barrier though they then had grip in the snow and it pulled the back end over pretty easily I was also quite happy with how it did climb over that considering uh, that rock I just went over considering that they're not chained but I wouldn't say this weighs like particularly a whole lot anyway. Like I say, I do think there is more weight at the rear than the front. It's still... Uh, it's not liking it. To be honest, actually, I apologise because it does glitch a tiny bit now. Just before it does, you can see, right, that is literally the amount of winch I did. I tapped it for like half a second and it instantly bumped the rear tyres over. So it was extremely close to uh, actually jumping it. It just, yeah, was being a bit iffy. Again, it's really because if you could have chained on them, um, I'd be able to like bite into the barrier a bit more and actually get it up and over there. See, again, I thought, and I've done it with a couple of things, going off to the right and just ramming that tree out of the way instead of driving through that grey bush. Got to watch out for them grey bushes. Um, yeah, and as you can see, it does the same thing with the tree again, which is about the only two times tonight it did it, but both times were in the middle of trying to do something for the review sort of thing so if it was just part of the missions or whatever I was doing it's uh yeah that's the times you don't want it to catch you out however apart from that it did actually like I don't think it'd have any issues going through deep snow and getting 
most places, but it's probably not going to be rapid. And you can see I've still got the uh, SnowRunner gearbox in. I left that in for quite a little while. <laughs> That's definitely what she said. Um, got up here alright. Even when going down, I near enough went like vertical, but the tyres are so close to the front that it, uh, yeah, it was still able to like walk along and it soon flipped itself back to its wheels, which is pretty nice. So next up was jumping over here. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't too sure because of the uh, because of the size of the wheels. And I thought, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Is it just going to like more ping me in the air rather than keeping its momentum forward and jumping over? I mean, it might just be a little bit of unluckiness due due to the uh, uh, like the wheelbase. It's a bit like when that loaf was climbing up some of the steps at the bunker. It just the steps were perfectly like spaced that you had to get all four wheels up the next step at once, and that's kind of doing the same thing where. I'm trying to just climb up that first pipe at the same time as I'm trying to get the front wheels over and it's just not really got... Yeah, it's not really liking it. But, what I would do in this situation, and it did get over pretty easy doing this, stick a winch on the back of it, because then the front's got no choice really. And, um, yeah. I mean, that definitely, I've, I can live with that, it was alright. So next up, going here for the uh, tree test. I wasn't that confident about this one anyway, to be honest. I thought maybe, but because it does sit a bit taller and that, like a lot of the loaf tiny, that just gets through uh, the TUZ166, assuming it can drive through this snow. I'm not saying it couldn't, I'm just saying I, I remember it gets slowed down by snow quite a lot, so. But it'd probably get through there just because, again, it's pretty small. Um. As you can see though, to be honest, that tree branch on the left as we're looking at it, I suppose it's on my right as I'm driving, that tree branch is a right wanker. It actually, like, if anything's going to hook you, it's going to be that one. And I'm not saying, especially in trucks, that doing that will work. I think I did get a bit lucky there, uh, driving sort of to the right as we're looking at it. But I did get through in the end. But yeah, I wouldn't fancy my chances in a... <laughs> Just generally speaking, like, I did hit a few tree branches tonight that absolutely just you catch the corner of it and it just stops you dead light that's where I think there's not a lot of weight in this thing to really plant it in the floor either as for the turning circle well, you can see with the cargo test I've decided I'm not using them shitty scout trailers one I can't get trailers on this anyway so it's not like I'd be able to attach it to the back which I will just say the bumper I put on has even got like a towing hook or whatever so uh, yeah, it, like I assume they were planning on giving it trailers. They've obviously took the trailers off for some reason. I don't really know why. But I'm using this, um, like, yeah, the truck two-slot trailer because I just think it's a hell of a lot better than that shitty Scout uh, two-slot trailer that has got tiny little wheels. Going along this road, the, the Scout trailer would be all right, basically, because there's no... Yeah, it's just a flat road. The second you get them off-roading, they just dig in like anchors and, they, yeah, they're just not very good at all. Whereas this, as you can see, to its credit, I mean, it has got a truck engine in, which is nice. It's a shame it doesn't then give you the choice of, like, the high range and the off-road gearbox, because I have to say, I don't think any of the Scout gearboxes are that good. Obviously, the Lodestar has a truck gearbox and the uh, Tatrin has the Advanced Special, but, yeah, in general, I think they need to space out the gears a little bit more in the freeway and snow runner, well, particularly the freeway. I mean, at the end of the day, you would expect a little, you know, a Jeep 4x4 thing like this to go faster than, like, a big military truck. So I have to say, going across here, though, I was pretty happy with it. And, like, I've not done uh, this truck trailer thing with any other scouts. But just, I know in my own head this trailer weighs more than nothing. The cargo, if I'm honest, this cargo doesn't really make any noticeable difference, I'd say. Anyway, even if I unpacked it now, the like the trailer wouldn't lift up or anything like that. But because it's got nice big tyres on it, even bigger than the tyres that are on there, this car and Marshall, like, as you can see, it's rolling, yeah, over the mud and stuff rather than just 
sinking into it and then you're trying to drag a whole wheel through the mud. So I actually got through there, yeah, surprisingly well. Obviously, you can't actually pick the cargo up though, which I don't like. I went and just brought... I think I brought the GMC 9500 and just put the cargo in, disconnected and tried jumping the wall in it. And uh, yeah, so I didn't have to get the cargo myself, but I'll be able to show you later. Going through this water, when it got, like, at the start there, it kind of goes from shallow to deep for a little bit. It slowed down a bit there. I went through there twice as well, in fact probably three times because I had to come back and get the interior footage that I forgot. Um, in high and that it was fine through there, but it's just as fast or slow as like the high low is and that. Going in auto through there, I managed to get up through the gears a bit. And yeah, it was, it was pretty nice in, a, in just in auto. And again, that deep snow there, it sort of got through pretty respectably again especially for a scout obviously the tatrin is a uh, yeah that goes through stuff like that no problem as for the interior view it's not that bad to be honest you can see the bonnet is there in the middle of the screen and it's one of them where I'll be using like the bottom left hand corner of the window a bit looking around though I've got windows all around again the spare wheel is blocking the rear view but I can just stick me out that's probably what I'd do anyway But yeah, as for the horizon, it's. I mean, if anything, I suppose your steering wheel's in a way, in the way, a little bit more than the bonnet, but not by a whole lot. It's not bad. I'd certainly get by with it anyway. But I do think it should be a little bit faster now, and again, that's where I think they've over nerfed it a bit, but. Yeah, I don't know really. It's um, especially when you look at the size of the tyres and everything. Do you think it should be motoring through there a bit better? It looks fine there when I was mostly on the road. Got through there very nicely as well. Didn't catch its bumper. I went through there three times and it never caught its bumper. You're gonna have to pretty much do like a full-on nose dive to catch it. Uh, yeah, next up is the old rock bridge. It's going yeah pretty decent as well, I suppose. It certainly climbs up there no problem, even though there's no chain or anything, it doesn't weigh a hell of a lot, so... It's not struggling like it was with the barriers, but you see, these tyres, I reckon, are pretty good at gripping on, like, those rocks or in this sort of terrain. Obviously, on the icy roads, just not at all, like, nothing really, except chains seem to like that, which I kind of get, but, yeah, it does limit, limit your options a little bit if you've got a fair bit of road driving in there. And even going through here, um, like it, it's not bad for a scout. It's not rapid, I'd still, if I had the choice, I'd rather bring like, I don't know, the Navistar, the Tega, the Voron, the Dolphin, stuff like that, but if I had to with this. But the biggest problem would be fuel and after I dropped that trailer off by the way there's a fuel station there and I did stick some fuel in it so this isn't the fuel that I made it say from the garage all the way around my little route that was uh, from basically where I did the water test and I'm already at half fuel I would have made it back to the garage in that then but yeah I, d I don't know why it's been so punished 40 litres is a bit ridiculously low See, it's little times like this, though, where going through here, I was like, alright, it's doing fine up to now. I kind of expected it to do half decent because of the big wide tyres. So that was going along the left-hand side, and then going swerving over here more. I honestly thought any second now it's probably going to be done. And to be fair, it got pretty close to where I thought, well, I was uh, considering the winch. But it was still going, and this was about the slowest it ever went. And as I started to get the front out of there, it got, I wouldn't say a lot faster. As you can see, this is still now like more at the other end of the mud pit. But I genuinely didn't need to use the winch. 
I drove as far over as you see me drive over, but that's where I basically send all the trucks and everything else. And yeah, I actually made it through there with no winches, with no help. And it didn't even take silly long, really. I mean, that fuel I've got left is from the garage, so it's not like it nailed three quarters of its fuel just getting through there. But yeah, next up the old snow test. And I was in the high low and then I tried auto for a little bit. Auto's alright and it can uh, go along in the snow in auto, but if I'm honest, it's a little bit. Yeah, I think just sticking it in high low definitely takes some of that erratic rev range. It's weird. It's kind of like a very slow revving scout, but then every now and then you can hear like the revs sort of peak a bit and it can go a little bit mad. So I went for a pretty harsh snow test, like the nose test, sorry, and it um, got over the first bit just fine, or down the little dip and back up the other side. So I tried to go for an even harsher one. And yeah, I mean, it's fair to say it's pretty decent. Also, with rolling, I reckon with the weight, imagine like just a slab of metal really low down at the chassis, but not obviously as wide as the wheels, just basically inside the wheels. Not literally inside them, just inside the width of them. Um, yeah, so like it's rollable as you can see here it does go but it takes a little bit and with the roof rack that would be a little bit easier to go so you can see there it's like obviously the weight's not in the actual wheels which I don't believe it is in the Yar either whereas like the custom muds on the Tager this there you go speak of the devil it's um they seem to keep the weight very low and they do seem to have weight to them look at the loaf Time is life, rolling around in the snow. But he's back to business. He knows I've got shit to do. I mean, look at him, goes for a little thing again. He's like, alright, seriously though. Seriously, Tager, stop messing around. Got Khan Marshalls to flip. You see there though, I mean, it's. The camera makes it look better than it was then it like it wasn't like it fully tipped over on its side and just got back to its wheels but it has got a fairly decent ability to get back to its wheels but once you've got no momentum because the wheels sit wider than say the roof you will sit beyond 90 degrees and yeah you do need like either a little bit of momentum to get you back off your side or if you're on a bit of a hill when you like that's in your favor it's definitely a little bit easier then once you can get that low down weight kind of over the first two wheels it it goes goes quite nicely then getting up there as well a little bit of jiggling around the only thing I will say the muds everything like runs out of grip a bit quicker than the chains there I think and I'll show you another bit in a sec but all things considered when I shimmed over to the left it didn't try and roll it didn't like lean up on two wheels and make it all a bit iffy or anything so yeah I'll give it a like a pass on that it scooted over to the left no problem even going along here I had a little look because normally I would just roll there on purpose but as it was a little scout I thought sod it I'll give it a go as you can see though it's not like it wants to be on its roof like it can certainly happen it can happen with anything but see there chained every truck and scout I've used chained it just drives up that same bit it's a bit you can see tired tracks in from old or older reviews and all sorts but and then when I shimmy over to the right I'm able to get up on that bit but yeah it's something I've noticed it's not only this it's just more the muds than uh, the truck or the scout so just ban abandoned the Tager in the woods because um, yeah went and grabbed another one of these trailers again I'm not bringing that stupid scout trailer so as you can see though I mean it's not going to blow your socks off. I'm not particularly suggesting to go winching truck trailers around with this thing anyway like I say you can't pick cargo up there might be a chance... Oh, no, I don't know, actually. No. 
I don't think you would be able to drop cargo off. I remember when I was with the ANK, though, and I did that 10 cargo mission in White Valley, and that let me drop, like, both ramped flatbeds. I didn't have to, like, detach one trader and, and reverse up the other one. But I don't know. Do you know what? I'll have to try it. I will try it, and I'll find out. I'll, uh, I'll find a mission on... I think I've still got a couple left on a Lake Cobb or whatever it's called. As for that mud back there, I mean, again, like I say, it's nothing... It's not going to blow your socks off. Going through with plenty of trucks would be a lot quicker. Some scouts are quicker. I, I believe the loaf was possibly a little bit quicker. However, I would say it was comfortable. Like, it didn't feel like it was going to get stuck. It's just not amazingly fast through there. And in a weird way, I suppose actually towing a trailer behind you kind of helps the erraticness of it a bit because even if the front's trying to twitch left and right because you've always got that weight behind you that's just pulling and keeping your back end straight it sort of yeah brings your fronts back in line a little bit better so it's probably not the worst thing see there it actually came up and said trailer and that but it says not enough space which I think is bullshit they should just let you put cargo in it's like who cares it wouldn't matter. So I won't show you the rest of driving up there. It was a bit slow. I, was, I got it wedged on a rock and blah, blah, blah. But nothing I'd say particularly worse than what a lot of other things do when I... It was a pretty meaty rock, I think that's fair to say. So yeah, I got my little loaf there just in case. Needed a wedge, but... Well, not a wedge, I suppose. Just a mobile winch point. But yeah, it just shows you, like, driving up here even though I am pulling that truck trailer and if I'm honest if I had to put concrete slabs in I don't know but I kinda reckon it possibly wouldn't get up there and it'd just start wheel spinning um, but I can't put the concrete slabs in anyway and um, to be honest yeah I actually think I'd rather this as the test anyway like a, a time when I could see myself doing this, imagine like you're just off scouting somewhere, you've finished doing something, you're going to head back to somewhere else and you can see a trailer that's part of a mission and you just kind of know if you head back that way, you know, bring it a third of the map across a road route or something, it's just a little bit nearer for something you're going to do in quarter an hour or whatever. Um, yeah, there's definitely the odd times I grab trailers with scouts. As for going up here, I honestly, you can see it was like umming and ah in a little bit. It seemed to pull more consistently in medium low than the high low. However, that was my second attempt by the way, I'll show you in a sec the first first one, but I did actually get all the way up the hill. Uh, I even managed to sort of get myself over like there's a sort of rock that sticks out into the Yeah, there, like the right hand side of where you're driving. Yeah, I ran out of fuel. Well, I got one litre left and it was like just going really slow. Then I accidentally detached the winch. Then I panicked and grabbed it again. I mean, <laughs> that's how quick it can all go wrong in SnowRunner. So going down here again, you can see it's a little bit... I was trying to steer left for quite a while there and yeah. I wouldn't say it's... Uh, it's funny how... Obviously it's a carn as well and so is a loaf. And yet, in almost every way, they're like just the opposite. So uh, yeah, jumped off it. If I'm honest, I didn't even remember. I normally clean those uh, like the uh, concrete slabs. I'll get rid of them, but I didn't, and it won't offer the offer me the chance to remove cargo. I don't think because I've not got the trailer connected. So yeah, did some kind of wrestling move on it, <laughs> hoping it'd uh, flip me, but to be honest it pinned me even worse, so there's only one thing left to do, send in the loaf. I mean look at him, he's inspecting them, inspecting them concrete slabs, making sure, making sure they're all good. I mean, I was try I was originally going to drive forward then, and then I was like, actually, if I reverse, I should be able to spit the trailer out sort of in front. I mean, this is why you get yourself a horse of a vehicle. Look at him. 
sheltered from rocks flying around in the quarry. I mean, that is a muscly little horse. Well, he can just spin a trailer around with two wheels in the trailer. And he's also pushing a car marshal around. Then see, he's like, bail out. Trailer on the loose. But he's got the minerals. He doesn't move that trailer. He showed it his boss. And he's off. He's off for the next one. To be honest, I could have just winched it from down there. I just fancied uh, reversing up and giving it a good old pull. Why not? What could possibly go wrong? I mean, look at him. Creating like a mini hurricane every time he does his horn. And at this point, I mean, skip ahead about two minutes if you don't want to see this, but if you remember from the Loaf review and the Hummer review and I believe the Lodestar review, I was using that shitty Scout trailer and everything was just struggling to pull it up here regardless of whether it had the uh, cargo on. And then when you unpack the cargo or it tipped off enough, it'd then detach and because it's like a flatbed scout trailer it just slides straight off. If you had a uh, concrete slab in here, at least if it did disconnect it's still got to make its way over the sideboards. But yeah, I knew in my own head. I had to give it a go. And I believe the loaf, the loaf deserved its chance to uh, yeah, drive up here a bit more graceful. Well they all do to be honest, like clearly this is just, even though it's appears to look and be like three times the weight and size of that crappy little uh, scout trailer. It's clearly a lot easier to tow along and on the roads it don't make any difference. And um, yeah, going up both hills of the quarry, I mean the, the loaf just did fine. I actually think I could have put it in high in the loaf and drove up there. The loaf basically doesn't stall in high until Sometimes it doesn't when you're stopped completely still, but as long as it can wheel spin as well. But if you're going uphill and you stop, it can definitely stall in high then. But yeah, I mean, the loaf made it up. So both of them are. Yeah, did pretty nicely on that. Better than I expected, to be honest. Right, and as, as for the ice test, I'm, I won't leave another round of battle in the ice in because I've already done them in like two odd videos. Maybe if I get like. A seriously rapid time sometime in the future I might put it in but yeah 218 I'm not like 218's good and I'm happy with it I would say but I know it's not like you know like a record breaking time there'll be people on YouTube I should imagine that have probably got it under two minutes I think there might even be some people in the comments which I will reply to soon by the way I've just I have actually felt pretty shit tonight so got all like achy bones headache going hot and cold even all the left hand side of my neck is all swollen for some reason I got a fatter neck than usual, so I don't know what that's all about, but it seems like the sort of thing I should just ignore until it goes away, if I'm honest. I should usually plan A when it comes to getting ill. <laughs> just deny it and ride it out, because I fucking hate going to the doctors and hospitals. Like, nothing against doctors, nurses, or they all do a great job. I've been to the hospital many times. I've, uh, I've got two metal plates in my cheek. I'll, I'll get into that another time. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's no coincidence, I always get ill just before I need to go to the doctors, is it? I mean, what are they doing? Are they sending me in the post, trying to make me ill to keep themselves in a job? It's like when mechanics, just before you go to get your MOT, they sneak around the night before and they swap all your tyres out for bold tyres and they wreck your indicators. It's like, I swear, this was brand new last Thursday. Someone's someone's tampered with it. <laughs> no, I, like, I reckon I am just ill. Like, standard issue, just, yeah. I'm good. If I have a fat neck for long enough, I'll consider speaking to like, I don't know, a snake specialist or something, but until then, I'm just going to pretend like it's not. I mean, the right side's good, so I just need to tell the left hand side of my neck to be more like the right hand side of my neck. Problem solved. I did actually, genuinely, I swear it was more swollen earlier and then I kind of squeezed it for a while <laughs> and then it went down. <laughs> Go and tell that to the doctors. Like, yeah, I squeezed it for a while, and then it went down, and then I got a swollen neck. What the hell's all that about? Are oh, they related? Did I did I dump too many liters of blood <laughs> back into the system? It had nowhere else to go. Give me a fat neck. God damn it! Like I swallowed a Viagra and it got stuck in my throat. I say to the doctor, like, you got anything for dick neck? <laughs> so there's something wrong with it. <laughs> Got a necktile dysfunction. 
Okay, I'll stop. Wow, fuck it. I'll, I'll, I'm beyond scraping the barrel. I'll keep digging through till I find one of them fucking moles. Tell it what a prick it is. Anyway, <laughs> as you can see, that's one thing I really don't like with the diffs. Is it moans after about two truck length or two scout lengths. It's like, as soon as you go from soft surface to a hard surface, it's having none of it. And it uh, very, very quickly starts damaging the gearbox. So this is a speed test, but one thing it actually does not too bad at, which is nice. For a good little flying test, I mean it kind of made it, I mean it starts, like well, it will do. Starts like a good one. As you can see though, it's taking damage there for some reason. Well the snorkel's kind of like, this is where basically, you'll see. The snorkel doesn't work quite as high as it makes out not quite as much as the pixels would suggest. So right now I would say that snorkel is definitely out of the water yet. I'm still taking about 11 damage so it's not like it's just on the limit otherwise I'll be taking like 2 or 3 damage. It's slowly starting to I believe, I don't know, I might have just skipped ahead <laughs> but eventually it leveled out I believe. So I came back this time a bit slower flew off there, you see like its weight isn't isn't that bad. Like it's uh, that's one thing. That's, yeah, that is one thing I would say. This and the loaf have in common is they are pretty good at rolling back to their wheels. I'd still definitely say the loaf is the winner as far as that goes, especially because this thing sits wider at the wheels. But it honestly, like in a, a lot of situations, you get a few lucky breaks where you do make it back to your wheels pretty easily. Yeah, driving in the water, it basically just starts floating, so as soon as you get to, like, I barely even, I think, water over the bonnet, and it was having none of it, so I couldn't really do a separate drowning test and all that, so I just figured I'd see how it handles the flying dolphin test. I hit it then, but I kind of hit it as I hit the floor as well, so I wasn't really too happy with that one, so we went back for some more. I mean, that was a good old, a good old nailing. You'll feel that one in the morning. But, I like that. It's just not quite. I mean, look at it. Just some mad wheelie. If that had hit, if that was like a nice hammer blow there, I would have absolutely nailed it. But, I mean, look at him. He's playing with his food now. It's like, please. Nope. And again, just teasing it. Just stroking it <laughs> before the main event. So, went for it again, nailed. I swear every time I'm recording somebody's like, hey, why don't I just ride my really loud bike? <laughs> uh, this one, I look at it, it glitched. I apologise, but I squidged it pretty damn good. Even the game, the game couldn't handle what happened. If I'm honest, it was pretty much the same as the other one where I just I nailed it a bit better and I didn't quite slide off as easily. But just for the hell of it, I brought the loaf with the roof rack. Just to show you what a goddamn horse of a vehicle it is. I mean, lands on its wheels every time. Not a problem. Goddamn professional. Look at that engine. That's straight out of a, an aircraft carrier or something. Yeah, it's still doing this thing where stuff just drags along a bit, but... I knew <laughs> if I pulled hard enough, it'd go eventually. Jobs are good on. I was just like, yeah, I forgot I had a uh, Don 71 up in the air from the other day. I, I genuinely forgot about that one, but it's still there. We'll leave it up there as a monument. Let Elon Musk know that I'm on to him. I'm going to race him to Mars. <laughs> I won't get into any more Mars stories yet. Uh, so, anyway, in conclusion, it's a bit of a funny one. By the way, and I genuinely don't know this, and I don't even know how I could check this, but. With the Navistar, obviously I bought it on the PlayStation Store and I can now see it in the truck store. I just got this as the, like free with the season pass. So I don't know if people can buy this if they haven't got the season pass. For me it shows up in the garage and it's or the truck storage and it's uh or no sorry, the truck garage. And it's twenty grand as stock and it's about forty grand when you've got the top winch and everything on it. 
It's about 37 there or whatever, 38, but I've got the autonomous, not the advanced on. Um, yeah, like I say, it's in the truck store and it's about 20 grand, but if it is just 20 grand, I'd grab it for the hell of it, for a laugh. I wouldn't say you're going to be doing a whole lot with it. I honestly thought that you get like this version as the season pass, and I thought there would be a normal wheeled version or where you could have other muds and all sorts. I didn't realise until like a week or so ago that I could even... Uh, sorry, not that I could even, that it was basically this one build of truck with these exact tyres or, you know, two sorts of tread, but... Yeah, so it's basically like this. There's not a whole lot else you can do to it. You can put the side flaps on and all this, but... Yeah, that's what I'd say. It's 20 grand. If, if you can get it for 20 grand, I'd get it and have a little mess around with it. If you have to buy it off the PlayStation Store, don't get it. Like, it ain't worth the money. Uh, I wouldn't make it be your deciding factor in the Season Pass. I personally believe the Season Pass is worth it. We're going to get another seven maps on, I think. So, I would, but yeah, I wouldn't say this is a deciding factor at all. So, uh, yeah, I suppose that's about it for today. I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Life's goddamn professional, of course. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I was just checking out. Checking out my little airplane. So, uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon.